Hey friends, my name is Alan Lee and this is the Handyman Journey YouTube channel. Welcome to today's video. We are going to be starting a new series called Questions from the Field. This series is going to be all about questions that we're taking from people from our Handyman Journey Facebook Mastermind group on Facebook. So if you're not a part of that, quick plug, go ahead and check that out. It's called the Handyman Journey Mastermind group on Facebook. And all of these questions are coming from people right there in that group. Our first question is from Tim Bartholomew. He asks, truck, van, or trailer, and why? Do certain types of jobs work better using one over the other? Does your staffing dictate vehicles, or do vehicles dictate staffing? Great question, thanks Tim, I appreciate that question. So in this video, what I'm gonna try and do is summarize what I believe is the best work vehicle and why I believe it's the best work vehicle. As you can see here, I have a trailer. This is currently a five by eight trailer. We are currently working on getting a bigger trailer. Um, we are working on getting a six by 12. And I also have a truck. Uh, the truck that we have this hooked up to is a 2014 F-150. Um, I'll tell you a little bit quickly uh, of the few different options that you can get uh, when you're talking about a handyman work vehicle. One, there's the truck and the trailer. Um, the other option is to get a van, like a big old uh, you know, Mercedes-Benz van or Dodge van, things like that. You know, I've seen commercials where they're like, I can fit you know, 62 uh, sheets of drywall in the back of my Mercedes van. You, know? you can do all that, that's great, that's fine and dandy. Um, and then also, there's a bunch of other options as well. I've seen people driving around in Priuses with ladders strapped to their roof. Um, seen people, I have a Scion XB, that's our estimating vehicle but I've actually seen people use that as their full-time handyman vehicle. It's really, at the end of the day, when it comes down to vehicles and which vehicle works best for you, the, the end result is whatever works best for you and your business. That's the most important. You gotta figure out what works best for your, uh, for your business, but I will break down the pros and the cons of each that we have in our business and we will go from there. So, um, first off, let's talk a little bit about my truck and trailer, okay? Like I said before, this is a five by eight trailer. I'll show you guys the inside of it here in a second. Hooked to a 2014 F-150. Now the reasons why we use this truck and trailer. Now, my most important thing is, I have always loved having the truck and trailer combination because you could, you could store all of your tools, everything in here, and then you have a truck for all your dump debris. So if you're doing toilets that day, you can throw your toilets in the back of the truck rather than in your trailer and have that in the aisle and like walk all around it trying to get your tools, it makes it into a big mess. So I love having the, the truck for that. Um, also, most of our trucks have a ladder rack on them. This truck does not have a ladder rack on it because it's our newest truck. We actually just got a toolbox, a deck toolbox for the back of that. Be checking out for a, a review video coming soon. So this does not have a ladder rack. This is not our materials truck. We have a whole nother truck that is dedicated to just materials. and. Our technician assistant drives that truck. That's kind of a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. We have a technician assistant who goes out, buys all, you know, gets all the materials from Home Depot, delivers that to the various jobs um, on Monday so that when we get to the job, all the materials are already at the job. So theoretically, I should not have to haul any materials in this truck. This truck is only for transportation and putting dump debris in the back there. But I love having the truck nonetheless so that I don't need to throw the dump debris in the back of the truck. We used to have an employee, he had a big, um, I think it was a 16 foot U-Haul. Uh, Great truck, it was fantastic. The only problem was, whenever you had dump debris, you had to throw it in the back of the truck, right in the aisle, so that when you went in there to work, you were like literally walking over all of the, you know, dump debris, the, you know, fence panels, you know, toilets, things like that attic ladders like it, it made it horrible if we didn't have a truck that followed him so he could throw his dump debris in there so it really posed a big issue what he ended up having to do is at the end of each day basically take everything out of the u-haul put it in his driveway um so he could start off fresh the next day and then he'd have to obviously get rid of that dump debris um you know at the end of the week or things like that so van versus truck and trailer i prefer a truck and trailer specifically for the dump debris to go in the back of the truck and not inside the trailer. When you have a van, you have to throw everything in that van. You don't have any other option where to put dump debris. So you are putting, you are putting dump debris where your, where your materials are held, where your tools are held, and it just makes a big old mess in my opinion. Same thing with a small vehicle. 
If you're hauling around a uh, you know, Scion XB or a Prius, where are you gonna put your dump debris? Now, another solution to that, which I've heard, and it's actually a fairly good solution. I knew a guy in, I think it was Missouri, uh, on our Handyman Journey Facebook Mastermind group, where he partnered with a dump debris removal company. So he had a guy on speed dial that basically he could call you know, at the end of every week and say, okay, I got a dump, um, I got a dump load that needs to go to the dump, uh, this is the address that's at. You know, and basically what he would do, this would take a little bit of manufacturing and working out with your clients as well, but he would basically tell his clients, I'm gonna put this dump debris on your front lawn, on your driveway, wherever they kind of came you know, to an agreement, whether that's on the curb, out in the street, whatever, and then this guy would come by at some point throughout the week, pick up all that dump debris and take it to the dump. It was no skin off the guy's back. Um, basically, he charged the client a dump fee, and then he would pay the dump removal guy a, a certain cut of that, right? Whatever he would charge him. So it was kind of like just passing the buck, right? But the dump debris got taken care of, not by him. So he could haul around in whatever he wanted. He could haul around in a Scion XB, a Prius, a van. He didn't have to worry about dump debris because he had that business that he had partnered with to come pick up the dump debris whenever he wanted. So that's kind of cool. It's an interesting idea. Um, it doesn't really fit our business model. You know, we like to leave things cleaner than what we found them. So I don't really like the idea of leaving dump debris out on the street, in the, in the client's driveway, things like that. But it's whatever works best for your company. This is what's worked best for our company. And really, I don't go to the dump anymore. I, what we have is we have a technician assistant like we talked about before. Every Monday he goes and he picks up materials, delivers to the client's houses, and then part of his other job is to go to the dump. So he, he follows me around to every job I go to and he helps me out on the jobs, does a great job. We actually just got a new technician assistant. I will introduce, introduce you guys to him here on another video. But, um, and basically any debris from that job goes right into his truck and then he goes and hauls that to the dump anyway. So um, at the end of the day, you know, truck and trailers, uh, you truck, trailer, van, Scion XB, Prius, it's up to you, you know, whatever works for your business. As far as does your staffing dictate your vehicle or do your vehicles dictate your staffing? That's a great question. Um, we, so <clears throat> when our past employee worked for us, he had a U-Haul and we ended up buying that U-Haul from him and we ended up selling it back to him when he left our company. And you know, that worked out well. Um, in, in the future, what I would do is have my vehicles dictate my staffing. So when we hire people now, we say this is the truck that you get. You know, we have, we have various trucks. We have truck one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. And we say, okay, this is your truck. Truck number three is your truck. And you are in charge of checking all the you know, maintenance, checking all the fluids, everything like that. Obviously we pay for the maintenance and things like that, but you are in charge of upkeeping that truck. Um, so they're basically assigned a truck and then a trailer if, if so be it, if they are a technician. So that's the way that I would do it in the future. I would not allow my employees to use their own personal vehicles for a few different options. And this is kind of getting into another, um, another video. But once you put your decal on someone's truck, that, um, that decal basically makes it where it's your truck. You need to be insuring that truck. Or if that truck or trailer were ever to get in an accident, the person that got in an accident with that truck or trailer is not gonna sue the person driving the truck, they're gonna come after you. Because um, from a legal standpoint, people believe that businesses have a whole lot more money than a common individual. Um, so people will go after the business before they go after the individual. So very important, uh, this is something I learned when we put our decal on that employee's truck, is that it was really better for us to own that truck so it could be under our auto, auto uh, commercial auto insurance policy, things like that, so that <clears throat> we could do it correctly. Um, so that's another thing to think about. Uh, for me, it's very important to put a decal on every truck that's out in the road, it's a rolling billboard, um, but you need to own that truck and it needs to be on your commercial liability, commercial auto insurance. And um, again, I'm not an insurance agent, but talk to your insurance agent, very, very important. So. Great question. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about my trailer here um, and kind of how we have it set up. And I'll also show you my truck. I'll show you the deck toolbox, um, give you guys kind of a rundown. But that's pretty much kind of the rough layout of what I believe in how we run our business and why we specifically use a truck and trailer. So let's go ahead and hop in our trailer. I'll show you guys a little bit about what I got here. All 
Alrighty guys, here is my trailer. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about it, but as you can tell, right off the bat, there's not a whole lot of space inside a trailer. The whole point of a trailer is you wanna maximize that thing the best you can. You wanna hold as many tools as you possibly can while having room to get in and do work if possible. As you can tell, this is a five by eight trailer, not very tall, you can't stand up in it. You kind of, it's only use really is to haul around tools. You can't work in this thing. That's why we're gonna be getting a six by 12 trailer. It's gonna be taller, we're gonna have a workbench, it's gonna be a whole lot nicer to work inside of it. Um, but I'll show you guys a little bit about what we got going on here. Okay, if you guys can see this, basically we got all of our hand tools here on the left side. These are all drawers that we built. So basically when they close, they actually have a self-locking mechanism so that they don't open up uh, on you down the road. Over here we got our workbench, we got our, um, you know, things like that. And then we have all of our long tools down here on the right. Up here on the left is where we keep all of our power tools and we have a bunch of corded Milwaukee power tools, saws, things like that. In the very back we have a table saw on the bottom, we have a um, miter saw up there, we have our ladders here. Uh, we always keep an ice chest, it gets pretty hot here in the Sacramento Valley, so keep an ice chest full of waters, things like that. Um, got brooms, you know, drop cloths, everything that you could need is inside this trailer. You could really fix pretty much anything that you need to fix with the stuff that's inside this trailer. Trailers are really, really nice because they keep everything that you need in a specific spot. Where if I need a tape measure, for instance, I know that it's right here. If I need uh, pliers, I know that they are right here. If I need a hammer, I know that it's right here. If I need my circular saw, I know that it's right over there. Everything is in the exact same spot, has its place. If I need a level, it's right there, for instance. Everything is in, is in it's the spot that it needs to be, and it keeps everything nice and neat. That's why I particularly like a trailer rather than just throwing everything kind of in the back of my truck. Oh, great question, Tim. I really, really appreciate your input in the Handyman Journey Facebook Mastermind group. If you guys are not a part of that, check it out. One huge thing that we talk about a lot constantly is pricing. I would highly recommend that you guys check out this book. It is called the Handyman Pricing Handbook, and it's on Amazon right now. Check out the description below. I will put a link to that. Um, everything uh, you know, out in the open, I wrote the book, so I'm a little bit biased, but it's really, really well put in depth uh, from handyman all around the world, different ways that they price handyman jobs. The way that I price handyman jobs, I would highly recommend you check it out. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Um, I would love to hear what your business uses. Do you use a van? Do you use a truck and trailer? Do you use a Scion? Do you use a Prius? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd absolutely love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope that you subscribe to this channel and like this video. Thank you guys and have a great one. We'll catch you on the next video and the next uh, episode of Questions from the Field. Have a great day, guys.